we're discussing key factors for succeeding with hemp, and today we're talking about harvesting. You know, Reggie, the first question is, you, is to you. Um, you know, talk to us about uh, testing cannabinoid ratios. Because of the, the, the federal limit of 0.3% THC, it's important that we know when to harvest the plant based on what the plant is producing. The best way to do that is actually go through the field and periodically sample flower, send that flower off to a testing lab and get those results back so that you have an accurate count of the cannabinoids in there. And, and when we talk about the cannabinoids, we talk acid cannabinoid and a neutral cannabinoid. And, and that, what that means is that there's gonna be CBDA, which is the acid, and CBD, as well as THCA and THC. The federal regulations are written such that it's a, it's a total THC count. So that means it's actually a combination of the, both the acid and the cannabinoid form after some mathematics is applied to give you a total THC count, right? And so what that means is that a farmer really needs to be able to plan for when to harvest by doing a regular walkthrough, probably weekly after week three or four, and sampling flour and sending that out. What you will be able to do is to accurately predict when you need to harvest before that plant goes hot, right? And the, the hot part is the combined THC of greater than 0.3. So understanding the cannabinoid ratios is important, but it's not the be-all, end-all, and it doesn't tell you how to harvest or how to treat that plant, right? So, so it's important to understand both of them and make your, your harvesting decisions based on that actual, the, the certificate of analysis from a lab. It's a very important number to understand and to go after diligently to test so that you do remain compliant. And how quickly can these cannabinoid levels go up in the field? Certain things make the plant spike hot faster, like high temperatures, underwatering. So it's important to, to have your, your cultivation practices really set as well, so that you don't potentially do something that triggers a, a spike in that cannabinoid ratio. But if you are testing along the way, you can see the progression. And Ray, um, how, how do I recognize the differences in, in pistol col coloration? The only really good way to know where you are is to, to have a chemo type test done. But in general, uh, you'll see the pistols start turning a little bit brown. It'll start from the very top of the flower and it'll spread down into the flower. When you see those, that top of that flower starting to turn brown and you notice that it's not growing at the top anymore, that's a term called crowning out that some of the people in the industry have used. But it's letting you know that it's getting close. Another way to physically tell that you're getting close to harvest time is there's, uh, you know, the trichomes are the, 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 the physical part of the plant where the oil is made. And it's basically a little bit of stalk with a drop of oil on the end of it. And if you look at those under a microscope, those will be clear. Typically, most, most of them be clear. So another rule of thumb of when you're getting close is when they start turning to an amber color. So Ray, talk to us about harvesting techniques. Well, there, there's many different ways you can harvest this plant. And a lot of it depends on what your end use is gonna be and, and how your, your customer this, that you're selling it to is going to, what, what form they're gonna want it in. Uh, one of the ways is to chop the entire plant off at the, at the stalk, just above the ground, and take it and hang the whole plant in a barn and dry it. That doesn't work too well if you're doing several hundred acres. But on a small scale, it's, it's traditionally how it was done. There's different types of ways to harvest mechanically, whether it's something that's more like a, a threshing type machine or machines that are basically a head on a combine that just grinds it up into small particles and puts it into a wagon behind that follows behind it and it's mechanically harvested that way. Uh, typically, when you mechanically harvest it with a machine that's chopping it into small pieces, grinding up pieces of stem in it, that creates what's in the industry called biomass. Biomass is typically sold to extractors and is, is not as high in value. The value basically is determined by your, your CBD or, or whatever uh, cannabinoid you're harvesting for, but by the pound rate is a lot, is a lot lower than something that has been cured and harvested and trimmed really nicely to where you have like a hand cured product which would be a higher value. And again, it, it really depends on, on what your final application is, right? So if you're looking for high quality cured flour, then the burping process and that handling, that post-harvest handling is extremely important. If you're just trying to make biomass for CBD isolate, most of that stuff is terpene free anyway, so you can go the faster route of, of, of drying and, and, and being a little bit less 
you know, careful about the terpene preservation because you're looking for the CBD isolate, right? So, so again, having an idea of, of what your final application is, is is really important. I think one of the big factors in 2019 success or failure was there were people who assumed that you just throw the seeds out there, you throw your plants out there, and they just do fine by themselves. You come back a few months later and you harvest and you're good, right? So that and that is not the case for hemp or cannabis. People call it a weed, but it's a it's a crop like any other, and it must be treated as such.